Welcome to another episode of True Love Talks. Today I'd like to talk about the assassination of JFK. She kisses him. The reason remembers. I want to talk about this is if his past lives come it's flooding all back over to Twitter, him, much like when we remember who we are everyone by knowing all of the love. CIA killed JFK and that they have admitted it. I've been watching the media, the mainstream media, talk about this subject that should be an explosive headline news if it was true. And somehow they manage to make it into a puddle of nothing. They don't say anything of any significance. And I'm astounded. I've watched, I don't know, four or five videos now. And I just can't tolerate it anymore because they don't say anything. This is arguably one of the most defining moments in American history. Everybody remembers where they were when it happened. They were horrified because they loved him so much because he was such a likable man. And right before they assassinated him, he had made this speech that allegedly told everyone the truth. So I won't play the speech because it's five minutes long and there's nothing in it. Uh, he does talk about secret societies and that sort of thing, but he doesn't really reveal anything. And then he talks about how the media has a duty to report things truthfully, blah, 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 blah. And the people should hold the government accountable and their actions shouldn't be hidden from the public. Like, that doesn't really merit any, you know, assassination. This conspiracy theory about him was started by the government um as with most conspiracies you know like 9-11 the moon landing you name it you know all of these conspiracies were started by the government to get you to start thinking and it's controlled opposition and the ones who have critical thinking will go beyond what is presented to them and investigate for themselves to find the truth whereas the others will get caught up in the conspiracy theory and be accepting of whatever you know, bullshit, they're fed by the controlled opposition people. Who are the government? How do you think this information gets let out? And then Hollywood goes and makes a movie about it, emphasizing the conspiracy. And then they go and call you conspiracy theorists for thinking this, even though they're the ones who planted the seed in your mind in the first place. So I'm kind of astounded and kind of not by the number of people on Twitter and kind of not who believe the conspiracy theory that is put before them. And a lot of the people who are perpetuating this idea are checkmark people, meaning they are, you know, people on Twitter who have authorized their account because they are a celebrity or a public figure. That equates to controlled opposition. So they're telling you, hey, hello, look, look at this information. What do you think of this? The CIA killed JFK. What do you think? What do you think? Why is this coming out now? It's coming out now because the truth is coming out everywhere. And who put this out? The government did. Do you really think that the government... Just think about this for a second. It may be a different administration in office right now. It may be 60 years later and everybody who was involved is dead now. But you're still talking about reporting on the American government to the people to say that the American government killed one of its own in broad daylight in front of the public on television. I mean, that in itself is disgusting when you think about it. To think that this was filmed, it wasn't live, it was filmed. The only copy of the assassination is the Zapruder film. It's the only copy. One guy, no news people, amateur photographer is taking this film. So they had every opportunity to edit it before they released it. So the Zapruder film was released on television and they showed the assassination to the people because they needed you to believe that it happened. It was released in 1969. The media was still fairly censored back then. It was fairly tame. We didn't have the violence on television that we have today. We didn't have all of the horror shows that we have on TV today. We didn't have all the swearing. We didn't have all of the nudity and the graphic sex. (laughs) That didn't even come out until the late 80s and early 90s. 
And even then, it was still fairly tame. I think Sex in the City in the 90s kind of broke the mold. HBO. So we're talking about fairly tame time in media. And they go and put a broadcast of the assassination, not just of any person, like a random person you don't know, the assassination of a beloved president of the United States. I mean, that in itself is so traumatic and so horrific. No wonder the people all know and remember where they were when it happened. And they know this. Why? Because the CIA is behind it, but not in the way that you think. They're behind it, but it's a movie. It's all staged, it's not real. JFK was never shot. The only thing that was shot that day was the Zapruder film. That's it. The funny thing is, is the JFK story was one of the first things that I looked into that I broke down and realized was all fake. This was 2017. I was in bed warding off a cold, and so I thought it would be fun to break down JFK. I don't know why, it just came to me. I thought, let's just break down JFK. And then I realized it was all fake. And then I moved on to the Oklahoma City bombing and that was fake too. I gotta be careful with what I say because, you know, censorship here. Which is ironic because that's what JFK was talking about back in the 60s. Censorship. The awful thing about this is that they put him on the stage, they put him on the scene and had Americans fall in love with him. Everybody loved him. What's not to love? He was you know, decent looking, he was young, he was personable, he was a man of the people, he had this glamorous wife. They were American royalty. However, you know, they have made several movies about the Kennedy family, and the Kennedy family is full of controversy, and the Kennedys are one of the 13 families. My point about all of this is the JFK was not killed, it was a movie. And believing that the government is going to tell you exactly what happened, that they're going to release all this information to the public, which is basically putting the government of the United States in a very awkward position. For them to prove beyond a doubt by providing documents that prove that the CIA was involved in killing JFK. I mean, the amount of documents involved in this case alone should tell you that they're burying it in documents so that it's just going to confound things even more. So for the government to, first of all, have committed this and then to have covered it up and then to release a conspiracy theory that suggests that they did this and covered it up and to leave this sort of, this cloud of doubt over whether or not it actually happened is so bizarre. When you first enter these conspiracy theories, nobody really knows where the theory came from. And yet, the media is the one putting out these documentaries pointing at the holes in the story. And then they draw their conclusions that leave you in this sort of trap of, did they, didn't they? Which is exactly what they did with the moon landing. And so they did that with JFK. They would like present interviews with people and poke holes in the in the Oswald story and show you this magical bullet that couldn't have killed him. And then they make fun of it on Seinfeld and this magical loogie that, you know, they couldn't have killed him. So, so many people have poked holes in it to show you this is not what you think it is. This is fake. But because the controlled opposition will corral you into a single file lane to say, well, here's the solution. The CIA did it. They were in on it the whole time. So if the CIA did it, do you not think that they would shut this down? Do you not think that the world's most powerful central intelligence agency would lock this information down, destroy it, hide it, bury it? kill all the people who could possibly talk about it. No, instead, they shoot the guy in broad daylight, make it look really suspicious, and then they film the shooting of the suspect, the only suspect that they have, that they framed. They film him getting shot on television so that you have all the evidence in front of you. If they really wanted to get rid of a president secretly, quietly, without any evidence without anybody knowing they could have done that 
but instead they do the opposite. They put it in broad daylight. They show you on film exactly what happened. They have people and they have experts on television pointing out all the flaws of how this person could not have done it alone. And then they say simultaneously, oh, he acted alone. They leave clues everywhere. They talk about it openly. They make Hollywood movies about it. They broadcast these documentaries on mainstream media that the government owns. Do you really think that if the government wanted to cover up an assassination of one of its own, they couldn't do it? Absolutely, they could do it. And instead, they chose to do this. Why would they choose to do it this way? Why would the government choose to put it in plain sight? Why would they choose to traumatize you with graphic violence of somebody who's beloved? Well, it was a threat. It was a threat and it was sending a message to anybody who dares speak out. This is what's gonna happen to you. Okay, so that's why they put this speech out there. They made him say this speech that alludes to secret societies, but doesn't actually say anything. He doesn't reveal anything. He doesn't talk names. So what exactly did he say that was so dangerous that he needed to be assassinated in front of people as a warning to people who talk out? But unfortunately, conspiracy theorists will take this and they will say, this is what happens to you when you speak out. So either nobody speaks out, which is not happening, people are speaking out now, or they will use that as an excuse when other people mysteriously go missing, these controlled opposition people who die mysteriously conspiracy theorists will just say oh they knew too much and they were actually controlled opposition who disappeared off the scene mysteriously so that it makes you believe that they were bumped off because they know too much so that you will believe the bullshit that they were spouting because if the people who got bumped off got bumped off because they knew too much well then you want to listen to what they had to say don't you but if they're controlled opposition they're not gonna tell you the truth. They're gonna tell you a little bit of truth and then they're gonna lie to you a whole lot more. So this story has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. This footage is the Zapruder film. Couple of things that I'm gonna point out here. Just a quick decode. You got Jack and Jackie in the back of an open car. The car is the can, which is a Jack in the box. Jack is the male, Jackie's the female. They're twins in the the jack-in-the-box. Jack gets shot in the head. Shot in the head is your pineal gland opening. He's the head, the chief, the president, the head of the government. He's shot in the head. Government is mind control or go green mind. The shot in the head is the pineal gland. It's the go green mind. It's the mind lighting up. Oh, the shot in the grassy knoll. The grassy knoll is the emerald city. Go green mind. It's the heart. It's the core. That's, uh, that's enough. The president is in an open top vehicle. He is exposed to the public. He's sitting on the outside of the car, not on the inside. And he's driving slowly. This happened in Texas. It is a small enclosed area. There's hardly anybody there to see him. This is one of the most popular presidents. He's like royalty. He's doing this drive by for publicity's sake. People knew that he was going to be there, but there's hardly anybody there to see him. Why? Because all the people who were there are part of the show. The Zapruder film is the only existing footage, the only footage that ever was taken. This camera is positioned precisely behind this sign, right at the moment that Kennedy gets shot in the chest. So you do not see how it happens. So he's already reacting to something. He's been shot already, and it happened right behind that sign. And now the car goes down into this dip. So you can hardly see what's going on. It's foggy photo style. There's no clear footage. You can see very clearly what's going on on purpose. Then, you know, he gets shot in the head. 
just to let you know how this is done in Hollywood, they can put a like a skull cap type of thing with um, an explosive device that shoots outward and sprays out whatever they want to make it look like brains. And it can be hidden under a wig so that, or like a toupee so that when it blows off, it doesn't hurt the guy. It just blows outward to give the illusion that he's been shot in the head. If you look at the footage, it does spray outward. As if he was, it was coming from the head outward as opposed to being hit here and spraying off after getting hit in the head. Because the shooter is supposed to be behind him and to the left and yet it pops off here and upward. It's hard to tell because it's so fast. But it looks more like it's coming from this direction, but the shooter's supposed to be on the left and behind. And Jackie gets out of the vehicle, which is so not safe. <laughs> you get plenty of blood in there. The more blood you get in there, the more it will spray out. Uh, once it fills up to the top there, kind of mop off the end so the blood doesn't soak through to the shirt and make sure that you probably soak a little bit out of there. Then I pump this sprayer up. Anyway, you can take the shirt off and cut a hole in the shirt where the shot's going to shoot through. Make sure the shirt's off when you do this so you don't cut the person. You put the shirt on and then you cover over the hole where the tube is. And so now uh, here's a little test shot here. You pull the trigger on the garden hose sprayer and the blood squirts out and you got a surprise dead person. Well, not really dead, but there you go. And then you got oozy boozy blood coming out on the shirt there. So just as an aside, I did background on the Kennedys with Katie Holmes and Greg Kinnear. I worked on that for quite some time. There were a few scenes where you can see me. There was a scene where I was I was in the White House and the Kennedys were throwing a party and they had a pianist play and I was sitting like behind and diagonally behind Katie Holmes. Um, I was wearing a white dress. And then there was another scene which I found and I will show you. The quality of the footage is really bad but I'm wearing a yellow dress and I am to the right of the uh, the Kennedys, Ethel and Bobby Kennedy on stage doing his campaign speech right before he was assassinated and then I'm in the kitchen following them later as uh, fans <laughs> fans do and uh, that's where he gets assassinated so I'm, I'm gonna include this footage just for fun and I will point myself out. This was done in 2011, well it was released in 2011 so I think it was either 2010 or 2011 that it was shot. <laughs> My, my thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. It was a lot of fun to work on. It, this was before, obviously, that I knew it was fake. Talk about time travel. The experience of being on that film, I do remember feeling like I was actually there. It was a really weird feeling. Um, there were certain days where we were shooting and because we we're in costume and everything around us is set in the 60s, it's very easy to feel like you are back in time. And there's been a few sets like that that I worked on where I felt that I had traveled back in time. But this one in particular did strike me as odd and I really felt that I was there. So <laughs> even something like that can really mess with your head a little bit. It 
didn't last very long. It was more like a fleeting feeling, but it was a very odd feeling. And I think this particular day that we were shooting this scene was one of those days because we were kind of isolated from the real world. We were we were staying in the Royal York Hotel where we shot the scene. And the scene was shot in the kitchen, like the actual kitchen of the hotel, which was in the basement. So it was so realistic to be shooting this scene. It does kind of mess with you because you're acting. You're acting as if you're actually there. You're acting as if you are part of it. It's part of acting. Like This is like what I said before. When you're acting, this is the acting bug. This is what gets you because it's so realistic that it's so easy to lose yourself in the moment and so easy to believe with your imagination to believe that you are there that it's so magical it it's a real trip this is what people mean by the acting bug the the realism of being in something that's a fantasy is just so beyond and the fact that they make this movie over and over and over again should tell you something. So that's my little aside. Anyway, along with the JFK papers that are coming out, Trump is being investigated. Twitter files was released, which Elon released um, some documents. Some of it has to do with the FBI contacting Twitter, asking them to suppress certain accounts, and FBI and Twitter denied it. So they're showing that the government is colluding with mainstream media to censor certain people, and yet they're still denying it. Um, Hunter Biden laptop information is coming out that's showing that they rigged the election or they tampered with the election. A lot of the things that are coming to light are proving conspiracy theories to be true to a point. And unfortunately, a lot of people are resting on the conspiracy theory as truth, which it's not. Dig deeper. I don't I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know you all get it. I just want to talk about it because it's annoying me. I'm I'm frustrated with seeing people on Twitter saying that the CIA killed JFK and they're not understanding the consequences of that. If if it came out that the government exposed the CIA as being involved in killing JFK, it would destroy the American government. Now they're trying to separate the American government from the FBI and the CIA, and they're saying that they have nothing to do with it and that these organizations are corrupt. I mean, to say that they have nothing to do with the CIA and the FBI is bullshit. Also on the subject, I have done a series of videos about the CIA and how it was formed and who's involved in it and what they were doing. After World War II, 1947, there was a lot of shuffling of people, primarily people from Germany and England, moving from there to the United States to establish the CIA. The CIA continued this operation that was going on in Germany at the time that was involved in enlightening people. So I made this video over about two years ago and it was about the new man, which lay the groundwork for transhumanism. This was something they were actively working on in Germany. The NZs were working on it and they brought that to the United States informing the CIA. There's a series called Hidden Hands and they're talking about the CIA, modern art, and how they're connected. Um, the, the New Age, uh, there's a lot of agendas that they were pushing on the scene in, in order to establish this awakening. If you haven't seen this video, I encourage you to go see it. I will leave a link in the description box. There's quite a few videos in that series that I did that were talking about transhumanism, blockchain, um, the people who are all connected to it. Elon Musk is one of them. Peter Thiel is another. All of these people, they're they're all the same people. This is all part of the grand orchestration and the CIA is behind all of it. Okay, so for example, CIA is connected to all of the other intelligence agencies, CSIS in Canada, MI5, MI6 in the UK, and Israeli intelligence. And I also made a video showing 
how Israeli intelligence is at the heart of all the new blockchain technologies. Peter Thiel is directly connected to the Israeli intelligence and Palantir is at the heart of all of it. Peter Thiel owns Palantir. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not for transhumanism. Transhumanism is like the physical answer to ascension, to awakening. And so I'm not supportive of it. Okay, thanks for listening. Hope you're having a great day. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.